We talked very little about jobs in the economy, and in fact, there seemed to be total indifference to how many jobs would be lost under the all-cuts Republican budget. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for the entire metro region by DFL Senate District 42. Here's host Tim O'Brien. Hello everyone, thanks for being with us. During the final weeks of the Minnesota legislative session, concerned citizens from all over the state showed up at the Capitol opposing all kinds of abhorrent Republican bills. The GOP caucus held an endless number of press conferences to counter the clear and consistent DFL message that a budget compromise was required to address the budget mess inherited from Governor Tim Pawlenty. The Republicans refused to budge, even when Governor Dayton made significant moves to find common ground on the budget. Local DFL legislators kept the flame lit. In May, with 19 days left in the legislative Hello, session, Minnetonka's John Benson put it this way. The, the issue during the campaign was, uh, should we have a balanced approach to this big deficit or should we do all cuts? And Republicans won the argument, at least during the campaign, that we're going to do all cuts, but now they're having trouble. Uh, actually doing it because they've discovered that if they do, uh, the voters aren't going to like it. They're not going to like the nursing homes being closed and the police being laid off and the schools having big budget deficits. They're really not going to like the increase in property taxes, which is going to happen if their bill goes through. So uh, they're hoping that the governor will come in and rescue them by, uh, you know, conceding to their demands and uh, he's not going to do it. So we're at loggerheads right now. We'll see what uh, happens. But uh, I've told my wife, don't plan on a summer vacation. The governor says he's willing to compromise. Uh, Republicans are saying, no, you come over to our side 100 percent, and then there will be compromise. Well, that's just not the way it works in a democracy. So governor Dayton held his ground and vetoed the Republican budget bills. Many bills were passed and signed, but the right-wing extremist agenda bills were axed. The session has ended. A state shutdown is imminent. The solution has always been a simple one. Make the very wealthiest Minnesotans pay their fair tax share, just as they've done in the past. Joining us right now is Representative Melissa Hortman. Melissa represents House Seat 47B, which is parts of the cities of Coon Rapids and Brooklyn Park. Melissa, welcome to the table. Thank you for having me. Melissa, you've been in the thick of things. As one of the DFL Minority Whips, you sit on the Civil Law, Taxes, and Redistricting Committees. You're halfway through your fourth term. What happened at this last session? You know, I have to say of the seven sessions I've been there, this was the most divisive and dysfunctional session I've ever seen. It was astonishing the level to which there was divisiveness through the budget bills, and then leading right up to two days before we adjourned, uh, debating the gay marriage ban. It really broke the hearts of the members of the House of Representatives, and I've never seen the place that broken and brokenhearted. Well, those are serious words. What, uh, what uh, is going to happen as we look forward? Well, you know, it was a frustrating session because it was very unproductive. There are fewer uh, bills that were signed into law. Can, can I interrupt you? As sure. I, as I recall, the Republicans uh, uh, cam campaign then the theme that they were going to focus like lasers on the economy and creation right. of jobs. Uh, right. Did that take place? Uh, you know, it's amazing. We focused a lot on social issues. For a majority who said they were going to pinpoint jobs in the economy, we talked very little about jobs in the economy. And in fact, there seemed to be total indifference to how many jobs would be lost under the all cuts Republican budget. What do you attribute the stance of the Republicans to? I know the new uh, freshmen mm. are very far to the right, and so I know. Uh, Speaker Zellers has to cater to that part of his caucus to retain his leadership. But you would think over time, those new members would sort of get a sense of what's realistic to expect in the budget and how harmful just an all cuts budget approach would be. Well, give us an overview of the budget. What, what, how do you view the, uh, the present posture of the parties? Well, what's unfortunate is that the Republicans have failed to acknowledge the massive unemployment that would result if Governor Dayton were to sign their budget into law. Over 30,000 jobs would be lost under the cuts that they're proposing. Those are private sector jobs in Maine, aren't they not? Mostly they are. They're hospital workers, they're nursing home workers. What the state government does is it pays a lot of providers, particularly in the area of health care. And if we stop paying providers, there's a lot of people who stop working. The custodian at your local hospital, the nurse at your local hospital. And when they stop working, 
they stop shopping at their local grocery store or going to the movie theater, and the ripple effect would be very harmful to Minnesota's economy. That's statewide, isn't it? Absolutely, throughout the state. And you know, greater Minnesota is even more dependent on government revenue than Twin Cities employment. In uh, greater Minnesota, for example, a nursing home is an employment center for the whole community. And if you lose a nursing home to a shutdown, suddenly you've decimated the economic vitality of a community or a community college. If you really slash Minsky to the level that they're proposing, which is bringing them back to 1998 funding levels, that means campuses would close. And in some greater Minnesota uh, communities, a closed campus means economic standstill. Well, newspapers all over the state have taken the Republicans to task with respect to uh, uh, their budget stance. I can't imagine that they will let the state shut down and stay shut down for very long just to protect the richest 2% of Minnesotans. When you look on a county by county basis at how many people would be hurt versus how many people would have to chip in and pay their fair share of taxes, it would be hard to imagine any state representative or state senator choosing those tiny number of the richest 2% and protecting them from paying their fair share while watching seniors get less health care, college students pay outrageous tuition, and other people to just plain lose their jobs. Well, or 150,000 people being thrown off of insurance, uh, the, the people that can ill afford to uh, get insurance from any other source. We would fill the Metrodome three times with the number of people who would be kicked off health insurance by the Republican budget bills. Unbelievable. Can you give us any indication from your perspective as to you think, how you think this might play out as we go forward? Well, I think there are moderates on the Republican side. There are some sane people who understand the serious ramifications and that this is not a political game. We're really talking about people's lives and it is not a game. So I think the scenario that forces the deal to get cut is if Kurt Zellers loses six members. The Speaker of the House, Kurt Zellers. Right, if Speaker <laughs> Zellers loses six members who say, look, you're being intransigent, I can no longer ally myself with you, and they come over and start collaborating with the Democrats, we are in the position to elect a new speaker and enact a deal that the Republicans don't like at all. So I think if you're Kurt Zellers, you look at the potential of losing six members of your caucus and you say, you know, I think there's a compromise. I think I would like to continue to be speaker, and so I think we can find a compromise. Well, now, one of the, uh, one of the problems uh, internally with the Republicans is this whole uh, uh, dust-up over the cut of local government aid, isn't it? Is that a, do you view that as a possible uh, avenue by which uh, certain Republicans in areas where they're going to lose their local government aid might be inclined to support a, a compromise position? Absolutely. I think for Kurt Zellers, when you look out across the state of Minnesota and you say, I want to stay in the majority, and then you look at the greater Minnesota communities that you would decimate if you cut their lo local government aid, as is proposed in their tax bill, you have to say to yourself, there's no way we can win these districts if we do this to these communities. And so at a certain point in time, you have to be a little bit more realistic about your political viability. Is it frustrating to serve in the minority when they were... The Republican majority takes its ill-conceived stances? You know, uh, it's taken some time uh, for the DFL House Caucus to um, develop an effective strategy at playing defense. We are used to solving problems. We are not used to blocking really bad, terrible things. And you use different skills when you're solving problems and bringing people together to come uh, up with solutions than the skills that you use to just block uh, very harmful things. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for DFL Senate District 42, Lori Pryor, Chair. Democratic Visions can also be seen on YouTube and at dflsd42.org.